Joining me right now is Oklahoma Senator, member of the Senate Finance and Homeland and Governmental Affairs Committees, James Lankford. Senator, it's great to see you this morning. Thanks very much for joining us. Hey, good to see you again. You know, there are some states that have actually been harder hit by the economic shutdown than they have been hit by health issues and the coronavirus. Uh, tell us your thoughts on reopening this country and where we are in terms of getting things back to normal, Senator. Yeah, I think the president got it right in uh, giving more authority to the governors and telling, reminding the governors, you have the ability to be able to make this decision. Here's a set of guidelines out there. Look at the status on the ground and don't look at a date, look at the data, and then to be able to make the decision based on that area. Uh, Oklahoma is targeting this Friday, uh, May the 1st, uh, to start reopening, uh, begin our first phase. Uh, we've seen a decline in cases. We're increasing the number of tests that are out there, but we have a declining number of positive results on it. That's a good thing for us. Uh, we should be able to re-engage our economy and uh, continue to the social distancing, continue wearing face masks in public, all those things to be able to guard each other. Uh, but all this talk about essential and non-essential businesses only works if you're not the one who owns or works at a non-essential business. If you're the one who owns or works at a non-essential business, it's essential to you and to your family. And so we've got to be able to balance out uh, the economic side and the life savings and all what happens in the functioning of our economy long term uh, with making sure we honor the health issues on the short term as well. And your state also getting impacted by the oil industry, getting hit hard by the coronavirus, the uh, shutdown causing a complete wipeout in demand. Uh, that has caused drilling company Diamond Offshore to file for Chapter 11 bankruptcy, claimed that it only has about $430 million of cash on hand. 2,500 jobs could be lost. It comes as Goldman Sachs is warning that global oil capacities will be tested in as little as three weeks, Senator. We got another major sell-off in the price of oil right now, down 21 percent. Your reaction? Yeah, oil, oil will be an issue for us for a very long time at this point. They've got 30 percent more capacity than they need at this point of gasoline. Uh, so we all, we all know the score, what happened. China started by quarantining 700 million people. Then Russia and Saudi Arabia went into a price war. And then it is then obviously we've got a global shutdown. Uh, we have a lot of gasoline produced and no place to put it. Our big issue right now is storage, as everyone knows. And uh, every time we get to a point where there's got to be another sale, on the futures market coming up where people have to take delivery, there is no place to be able to take delivery of this oil. So it's going to be down for a very long time. Uh, as as soon as we get back to working again and people actually get to driving again, uh, then we'll begin to bring the excess down. Uh, but it's going to take a while to be able to get to that spot, not just here in the United States, but globally as well. But we're, we're going to need some things to be able to continue to go through this. Right now, the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, okay. opening that up for additional storage is beneficial. That provides us more space. I uh, want the Department of Energy to be able to uh, lengthen, or I, actually I should say shorten the amount of time of storage. Right now, if you're going to store in the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, you have to leave it there for two years. They should be able to shorten that down to about six months or so to allow more people to be able to put oil in there in a shorter time period to be able to use that extra capacity space in a way it wasn't designed for, but could be used right now in this time period. Yeah, but whatever the situation is, there will be many oil companies, drilling companies that will not be able to make it out of this. We will see more bankruptcies. We will see more job cuts from an industry that really was our growth story for so long. Russia wanted to put this industry out of business. What's your take on the money going to certain businesses, whether small businesses, getting money to, to uh, uh, people at home uh, in this Paycheck Protection Program? Senator, give us your take. Is this going to be enough or do you want to see further stimulus? And do you think the do you think that the administration should be giving some kinds of financial alleviating to the oil companies by I don't want to call it a bailout, but 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 the way that they've done the farmers, they've done the airlines, should they be doing similar things with the oil companies? We do need to look at the resources that we have right now because our energy independence is our future for our country. We finally got to a point we are energy independent. We never want to go back again where we're dependent on Russia and on the Middle East uh, for our energy. That puts a leverage spot on us. We do not want to have hanging over our heads. So it's very important that this industry is sustained. Right now, there's a 13-3 uh, facility from the Federal Reserve and the Treasury going out towards energy companies. That's very important. Giving a uh, load of no interest or, or colla low collateral loans uh, to these uh, companies is very important to sustain them through this hard time. The Paycheck Protection Program helps all their employees for two months, but this is going to take longer than two months. But any company that's 500 or less in the energy sector, they're open to use the Paycheck Protection Program as well. 
And then for those companies 500 or less, they can also get the economic injury disaster loans, gives them $2 million of capital for those small companies. As you mentioned before, a lot of our energy companies are not the Exxons and Chevrons and, and BP. Uh, they're small mom and pop operations. They're uh, drilling companies. They are uh, companies that are doing fracking. They're doing sand. They're doing trucking and water. Uh, these are essential parts of the economy for all of the country, but especially for the energy economy. We've got to sustain those small energy companies while we're focused on some of the larger programs as well. Senator, about this uh, protection program, how much of that money is already committed? I mean, you know, the, the first tranche of $350 billion went out the door in a hurry. It was out of money by last Thursday. The next tranche of $320 billion, some of it is already committed for. So is that enough at this point? And are you expecting to work on a fourth stimulus? Right now, the major goal that we have is getting the economy back open again. I think it's what most small businesses want is just the economy open. Uh, as you know, uh, the uh, Paycheck Protection Program reopens this morning, 10 o'clock or 10.30 uh, Eastern Time, 9.30 where I am, Center of the Universe Central Time. Uh, for us, when we see this reopen and what Small Business Administration has already said is all those who are in line already that have already filled out their application, process those first be able to get those out the door, new uh, not-for-profits and for-profits uh, to be able to go in, to be able to get those things processed. We don't know how long it'll take. It was about 14 days the last time to go through $350 billion. There's 1.7 million companies uh, and entities that took advantage of that. We would expect about the same number again uh, to be able to take advantage of that. Uh, so we'll see. But no one really knows how long it lasts. It depends on how many people apply and how quickly we go through it. And then after that, we'll see where we are as far as reopening the economy and getting us going again. Senator, it's great to have you on the program this morning. Thanks so much. Good to talk with you, sir. You bet. Good to see you again.